Lesson 29. What does Jesus say about religious duties? Well, it might surprise you. We're talking about praying, fasting, going to church, reading our Bible, giving offerings. What does Jesus say for us to do with all of that? We're going to compare two verses. The last verse of chapter 5 and the first verse of chapter 6. This might surprise you. I'm going to read them both together, which we don't normally do because of a chapter division. But listen to these two in tandem. You, therefore, must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. So, be perfect. Be careful. Can you do both? First, let me define the word perfect, because we think it means morally flawless. Be morally flawless as your father's morally flawless. Not possible. The word actually means be mature or complete. And in the context, he's arguing that we should love as completely as God loves. He loves the righteous and the unrighteous. He loves those who love him and those who despise him. And we too should love those who are like us and those who don't like us. That's the call to be perfect as your father's perfect, comprehensive in who you love. And, and in the argument of chapter 5, it really goes back to being a light on a hill, being salt of the earth, that we should allow our light to shine in such a way that those who like us and those who are dislike us will see the light of Jesus Christ. But then in chapter 6, he says, shh, 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 don't let anybody know. So how can I be a light on a hill if my piety is private? Here, here's my observation. We tend to practice our piety publicly with people who agree with us. And we practice our morality privately with people who disagree with us. And what Jesus is teaching, I think, is to switch that around. That our piety with the people of God should be private, but our ethics with people of the world should be public. So, what does that look like? Jesus gives three illustrations of giving of offerings, of praying, and of fasting. He could have given several others. He chose these three. I want to read the conclusion of each of these three right in a row. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. But when you pray, go into your room, and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, all of us want recognition. All of us need recognition, and God knows you need it because he's the one that put it in you. What Jesus is saying is, you can either rely on recognition from people around you or from your Father who is in secret. You can't have both, not at the same time. So you either choose recognition from God or recognition from people. And I think the reason we are public with our piety and private with our ethics is because we prefer the approval of people over God. We think it's more immediate, and, and maybe it is, but it's not more permanent. We have to make a choice of whether we will be approved by our Father in heaven or by people around us. Look, you need approval. There's nothing wrong with that. But the approval that you need, if you try to get it from people, it will be fickle and inconsistent. It will drive you to be private where you need to be public. And it will drive you to be public where you need to be private. Let's take a look at our Father in secret. Spend some time in quiet with Him. And what you'll find is, His approval is not only more immediate, more satisfying, it's also more permanent.